Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part 12 of my Umineko Let's Play. So before I do anything else, uh, something that was mentioned a couple of episodes ago that people asked me to do was to see what happens if I try to execute the witch. So let's go to the witch side. Yeah, because I recorded episode 11 uh, before I released episode Wait, I recorded episode 11, yeah, before I released episode 10, so I didn't get to see the comments until I'd already put out episode 11. So, let's go ahead and see what happens if I execute them. Oh, it is futile for a human like yourself to dream of killing me. Even if you fire bullets at me, they will merely bounce back, as though by a mirror and strike you down. However, there is one single way to kill me. You grasp the method in the palm of your hand... I doubt a mediocre fool like you could ever do it, of course. Kee hee 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 hee. Cackle, cackle, cackle. Alright, and then let's see what happens if we try and uh, execute Burncastle. By continuing to think, I live on for all eternity. In other words, if I stop thinking, I can die at any time. However, I can revive whenever I want if I start thinking again. So I'm fickle and inconsistent. I live as I like, die as I like, revive as I like. Alright, there we go. So I did it. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we just started Chapter 2 of Umineko. So this one is definitely seeming to focus on the servants, specifically Shannon and her relationship with George and how that started. And it seemed like it started with her uh, doing a favor for Beatrice, which, holy crap, like, Beatrice just showed up, like, right away in this chapter. Because the thing is, like, the previous chapter, uh, Beatrice was just, she was spoken about, she was hinted at with the butterflies, but never actually made an appearance. But with this one, it flipped it, and she just appeared immediately, offering Shannon the chance to, you know, not be furniture and to have this relationship with George in exchange for breaking the mirror, which she did. And she has the relationship with George, but I have a feeling that Beatrice is going to want something in return, and it's not going to be that simple. So what that is, we'll see, but... But anyway, we're going to get back into things, and we are going to see where the story goes from here, so let's go. えぇ、別部屋ってなんだよ。じゃあ、わざわざシャノンとジョージ兄さんは別の部屋に泊まったのかよ。あ、はい。あの、そんなにもおかしかったでしょうか。since Jessica's cheeks had been stuffed with chocolate-coated uh, Shinzuko biscuits that Shannon had brought as a souvenir from Okinawa, it all flew out at Shannon when Jessica cried. Okay, so now we're in present, quote-unquote, present time where they're actually in a relationship. Aww, Shannon and George are so... They're so innocent. That's <laughs> とても大きな水族館が沖縄にあるから、ぜひ行こうって誘われて、私、お魚とか好きですし。いや、だからさ、健全な男女がお泊まりありで旅行に行ったわけだろそれで、キューも投げれば、キューもないのかよ。まして
Shannon and George had chosen to go to Okinawa because there was a huge aquarium there. That was because their first meeting had revolved around an aquarium. Since they had start, uh, started at an aquarium, having their first overnight trip also be to an aquarium must have held some uh, oh my gosh, commemorative value. Wait, so they're in a relationship, but they're also still single? Like, do they imply single as in, like, not married? Because they seem to be in a relationship. お、お嬢様がどういう意味でおっしゃってるのかわかりませんが、ちょ、ジョージ様は最後まで本当に真摯でいてくださいました。それはその私もでも私たちお付き合いはしてますけど、その。お嬢様が決心されているようなことはその。Shannon's oh, face was bright red. She was restlessly fidgeting, making a circle with both hands, then a chain link continuously intertwining, separating and making heart shapes with them. Apparently, the dramatic progress Jessica had looked forward to hadn't happened, but it seemed that it had been a very important experience for Shannon in her own way. So in the end, no matter how much Jessica envied Shannon or made fun of her, it didn't change the fact that Shannon had a huge lead on her. I know that Jessica has a crush on Canon. Hopefully it's not literally just because Canon is like the only boy, uh, you know, on the island around her age and she's just, you know, like desperate to be in a relationship. I'm sure there's more to it than that. But it's cute that Shannon and Jessica, despite the fact Shannon is like a maid and she's like, you know, serving the family, she obviously has a friendship with Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica threw several cushions at her, but midway she had an asthma attack and started to cough pretty badly. Shannon hurriedly ran over to her and took a look on top of the nearby side table. An adorable basket was placed there, and inside of it was Jessica's inhaler. Shannon picked it up and handed it over to Jessica. Jessica's asthma attacks always came suddenly. Because of this, she'd had to carry the medicine around with her all the time. Yeah, it, uh, it was hinted at in the first episode. I thought it was going to, you know, make more of an appearance, but not really. But there's still quite a few chapters, so there might be a point where it does make a bigger, like, you know, it has a big uh, impact on the story. She breathed in the medicine, and after some time spent holding back her coughing, her asthma finally settled down. Shannon thought this a good chance to leave, bowed courteously, and made to exit the room. As she did, one more small cushion came flying and hit Shannon on the head. She looked around and saw Jessica was on the verge of crying, half of her face buried in her last and favorite cushion. That face was red and meek. まさか。it could also be because you're isolated on an island and don't really get to see people your own age. Yeah, she goes to school, but other than that, like, it doesn't sound like she's got much of a social life. 
お嬢様はそのままで十分に素敵ですそしてその魅力はこれからもっともっと増していくと思いますよでも私だけ彼氏できないサクもヒナも彼氏できたのに私にだけできないよやっぱり私には魅力ないからかなみんなね文化祭に彼氏連れてくるんだって私もその日までにはきっと彼氏いるって思って大見え切って彼氏だってできやしない私だけ私だけ Before she realized it, Jessica was shedding huge tears. Jessica hadn't really planned on crying, and of course, she felt like supporting Shannon's progress and love as a friend. However, she made fun of Shannon. Her true feelings had suddenly gotten mixed in, and the tears had just poured out on their own. Shannon understood Jessica's innocent and easily injured heart. Jessica's usual rough style of speech was all just an attempt to protect her own easily injured heart. As a daughter and successor to the Ushiromiya family, and as a girl isolated on Rokunjima, the only person she could expose her true feelings to were Shannon. Shannon understood that, so she strongly regretted feeling a little too self satisfied. She's like, you know, uh, <laughs> Bay Teriche, if she likes you enough, she might get you a boyfriend too. Shano,もう時間だろ。早く行かないとまたゲンチさんやカーさんに怒られるぜ。私は全然平気だから早く行きなよ。悪いな、泣いちゃったりなんかしてさ。Jessica faced away as if to show she wasn't looking for attention, and waved her hand as though to drive Sa、uh, Shannon away. Shannon took that as a sign she didn't want to be badgered anymore, bowed her head, and left the room. When her footsteps disappeared into the distance, Jessica lay down on her bed, still hugging the cushion. Her expression was still a little meek, with tears in her eyes. But for the first time in a long time, she had a very, very quiet and honest conversation with her heart. As Shannon watered the flower beds in the garden in high spirits, she sensed someone's presence. She turned around, thinking that if one of the family had come to visit, she must greet them. Oh, is it going to be Ava? And what she saw was that witch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, she talking about Beatrice or Ava? They get both, she could consider them both witches in their own ways. I can't get over how much Beatrice is just appearing so early on in this chapter. <laughs> Wonder if Beatrice is going to be like, all right, now you have to do something else for me because it feels like it's a little too, I don't know, like for a witch, she had to have something else up her sleeve, right? As Beatrice sat on the rose arch, she happily blew on her pipe. Sitting in a place like that would crush the roses, and it might have been dangerous if he fell off the arch. But after all, this was a witch. That was surely an unnecessary concern. はい。おかげさまです。その順調です。当然よ。我らの魔法は敵面である。そなたにはまるで二人が出会うのはあらかじめ決められた運命であったかのように感じているかもしれぬ。だがそれは間違いよ。夢夢。The witch was calling attention to something. Two things, actually. That originally her relationship with George had been, uh, had been completely impossible. 
and that her magic power was so great it could manipulate that fate. Here we go talking about fate again, whether fate is set in stone or it can be changed. Shannon had been swept up in these sweet days and had started to fall under the illusion that all fate was revolving around her. But the witch's words made her remember. Her relationship with George had originally been impossible. No, might also have been impossible in the future as well. <笑>すまぬすまぬ。<笑> その<笑> <laughs> Patricia's gonna be like, you didn't even sleep in the same bed together. Come on, don't waste my magic. <laughs> Shannon's face suddenly grew bright. The witch laughed lightly, as though that transformation was worth money. <laughs> It does have to be pretty sad to, like, you know, know that your relationship is just because of someone else's help. And it has nothing to do with, like, fate or... I think Featrice did say that, like, she can't make people fall in love. Like, George had had to have feelings for her and she just brought them together. But, like, still, it's kind of sad that your relationship just didn't happen organically. It happened because of, like, outside... Forces, you know. Beatrice laughed pleasantly. That smile was without a trace of malice, making her look as though she blessed the lover's secret meeting from the bottom of her heart. After that day, Beatrice had shown herself before Shannon every once in a while. Even now, Shannon still thought of her as a creepy being. However, she was also hugely indebted to this person for bestowing the magic that had given her the relationship she had with George. So, so Shannon was trying with all her might not to be surprised or scared. So... so that the... I know... It seemed that even the witch who boasted of living for 1,000 years hadn't been able to predict that she would receive a souvenir from a pair of sweet lovers. When she saw that surprise expression, Shannon thought of the witch as a friend for the first time. おほ。ラードと小麦粉で作った東洋クッキーか。それを西洋風にチョコで包むとは、まさに和洋折衷、菓子の汁クロードよの。お。何がおかしい。いえ。いえ。This is so strange to see her act like a human. I wonder if Beatrice is really going to take a liking to Shannon and be like, "I will protect you, my new friend. I will do what it takes to help you out." This mysterious witch, who surely held a terrifying power, was chomping down on the treats one after another, making a sound like a squirrel stuffing walnuts into its mouth. <laughs> Couldn't she just, like, make them appear? She's a witch. She could just make her own treats. After a while, Shannon couldn't conceal her laughter. Hmm. <laughs> The witch was in a great mood, having enjoyed the modern treats to the full. Ano, 
もう私には十分だと思いますのでお返しします The thing that Shannon had softly set on the table was a gold colored butterfly brooch. Oh, there's the butterfly, golden butterfly, right? うん。はい、もうバラと同じか。過ぎた席は根を腐らせる。苦労せねば育む目の花もあろう。ならば好きにするがよい。身につけず。宝石箱の中にしまうもよかろう。それはそなたに送ったわらわの行為だ。それを返
Kinzo the most wants to have the uh, the magical talent, but he doesn't. Maybe it's an Ushiromiya thing. Maybe they just don't have, except for Maria, but maybe they just don't have that magical talent in their blood. Shidana. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Dojo suru hodo sainou ga nai. As soon as they started talking about Kinzo, it felt like the atmosphere around Beatrice changed. She had spoken about Kraus and the rest lack of magic talent, as though she looked down on them, but she spoke of Kinzo in a different way. Anyone connected to the Ushiromiya family would know about Kinzo's legend of the gold. According to the legend, Kinzo had summoned the witch Beatrice and had been conferred gold. In short, that implied she had some kind of relationship with Kinzo. <laughs> The witch who usually looked down on people was unexpectedly praising someone. While she lambasted Kinzo, calling him talentless, she praised his efforts. ま、<笑> The words, just my luck, show that this had been a disaster for her. Shannon hesitated over whether it would be alright to encourage her to continue, but Beatrice continued on her own, ignoring Shannon. <笑>一応、書式もルールも揃っていた。いくつかの作法が混在していたが、まあ、その熱意に免じ、寛大に契約に応じてやったのだ。そして我らは、山なす黄金を与えてやった。そして親方様はその黄金を使って事業を成功させ今日の財を成すのですねうん魔法の才能は空っ岸だが詳細と爆災はあったようだないや理不尽なる賭けに全て落とす勇気と狂気ゆえにか狂気は時に<笑> <laughs> Shannon felt like she was daydreaming. While everyone in the Ushiromiya family knew of the story that Kinzo had delved into sorcery, summoned a witch, and been given gold, in actuality it was all rambling that no one believed in. And now the witch herself was telling her it was true. Shannon felt a little flustered at this insane secret that only she knew. So, man, they're just putting it right out there that... At, <sighs> we could be dealing with unreliable narrators here, but like it's just putting it out there like, yes, the witch exists, yes, she did give him the gold. There's got to be more to it than that, though. So, the the そして最後に世界の真理を求めたのだ。世界の真理世界を構成する一なる元素。人の世で得られる全てを満たした金蔵は人が求める最後の欲望としてそれを欲したのだ。she felt like she had heard the witch say those words before. It's love, right? But Beatrice saw Shannon trying to remember what that was. She smiled awkwardly, waving her hand, and saying there was no need to remember. わらわも金蔵を少し見くびっていた。まさかあれほどの力を見せるとは思わなかったのでな。おかげでこの座まだ。茶飲み友達もなく。
That must have been part of her breaking the mirror. It must have been for some reason to do with that. You feel kind of bad for Beatrice, assuming she's real about how she's been stuck in place and not really having anyone but Shannon to talk to. And that's why she wants the epitaph, is like she wants that to happen because she wants to be like unstuck from this place. <laughs> Well, in that case, when Maria showed up, I'm sure Beatrice was quite happy to have someone, you know, who is, like, so in love with her. And someone she could talk to. As she laughed in self-derision, she tapped her teacup with her finger. It made the clear sound of porcelain. Shannon didn't know whether the word self-derision was really an accurate expression to describe the look on the witch's face. Shannon didn't understand everything, but she could more or less figure out the situation. And it was surely a topic she should not press the witch on lightly, unless the witch started talking about it herself. To sum up everything she had said up until now, Beatrice, who had been summoned by Kinza's magic, could not leave this island for some reason, and she had lost her power in her form, living her days in boredom. During that time, her words had reached Shannon, who had never forgot to strongly respect the witch, and she had made Shannon help her to regain her power, even if only for a little bit of it. As a result, she became able to drink tea with Shannon like this. ベアトリーチ様が私に悪ように言ったあの鏡は一体何なのですか？ああ、その話か。この辺りの島でおおむかしいろいろとあったらしくてな。そのせいで良くないものがたまり。悪い歪みを引き寄せていたのだ。それを旅の東洋魔術師か何かが鎮魂の社を混流して封じ込めたらしい。それ自体は藁とはどうでもいいことなのだが困ったことに魔力の基礎が違っててな。藁の魔力に
She was probably talking to herself. As Beatrice gazed at the seabirds tracing the horizon, she put her tea to her lips again. <laughs> Maybe the witch had noticed the deep meaning behind Shannon's words. She laughed lightly and set down her empty teacup. もはや <laughs> Since her relationship with George had begun, Shannon's face had grown brighter more often. Her smile had made everything go smoothly and had even changed her look. Shannon made fewer mistakes in her work than she had before, and the family members' opinions of her was starting to change slightly. Just the other day, Krauss, who rarely exchanged words with her, had suddenly started talking to her, surprising her. <laughs> いえ。でも楽しい毎日です。はい。よいことじゃないか。同じコーヒーなら笑顔で継がれた方がうまいに決まっている。その笑顔でもう一杯頼めんかね。はい。That had become a chance for Shannon to gain confidence in herself. Of course, it didn't go beyond her own heart, and it wasn't so big a change that everyone could see it. But she had begun to change bit by bit. I guess it goes both ways, right? If good things happen in your life and it kind of rolls the ball of like more good things happening in your life, and the opposite can happen when bad things happen in your life and it just seems to snowball because it affects your mood and it can affect, you know, everything, right? Shannon understood it clearly. To know love was to gain a soul and therefore to be born again from furniture to human. There was absolutely nothing mistaken in Beatrice's words. By knowing love, Shannon had learned what it was to be human. Mezrasiuchakaochisoninatana. Uh oh, it's gonna be Natsui, maybe? Maybe not something bad's gonna happen to Natsui as well. The witch gripped a teaspoon and flipped it with her fingers, sending it in the air. Then it was flicked by the fingers of some invisible person in empty space and flew straight into a bush close near. Oh, is that one of the other witches? Oh! The bush moved violently and Cannon came out. Never mind! Okay, Cannon! It seemed he had been there for some time and had been watching their tea party. The spoon was gripped in his hand. If he had not been able to catch it by reflex, it might have hit him hard enough in the forehead and caused him to start oozing blood. <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Cannon kept silent, but it seemed that there was a slightly hostile look in his eyes. On the outside, he acted respectively. But unlike Shannon, Cannon did not trust the witch. Beatrice wrapped the table with her pipe, and the tea set turned into gold butterflies which flew upwards in unison. They scattered in every direction, and the cleanup was already done. <laughs> What is going on with Cannon? He could just be like, I mean, I didn't trust Beatrice either, but it feels like there's more to it than that. Cannon had said it in a small voice, but it seemed that the witch had heard it perfectly. She giggled, but did not reply. <laughs> ジョージとの話をまた聞かせておくれ。人の恋しより甘い茶かは他にない。<笑> 
Even witches love gossip, right? So <laughs> <laughs> Beatrice's body also became gold butterflies, which scattered in all directions and disappeared. It was a very fantastical and beautiful scene, like a blizzard of gold leaf. For a while, Shannon, quiet Shannon quietly watched the witch's exit. Cannon approached her from behind and spoke with a very different expression on his face than his sister's. Something obviously happened because in the first episode, Canon was very respectful of Beatrice. Maybe out of fear, or maybe he came around on her, I don't know. Shannon spoke seriously, which was unusual for her. To Cannon, who knew her well, it must have seemed extremely serious. Cannon showed almost excessive surprise at Shannon's style of speech and remained silent. Ah,確かにベアトリーチ様は人間とは違う。恐ろしい力を持っているし、恐れ敬わなければならない存在だと思う。でも人間とは違うからといって。それだけを理由に意味嫌うのはとても失礼なことだと思うの。姉さんの言いたいことはわかるよ。姉さんはあいつにあのブローチをもらってから変わった。まるで魔女の虜だよ。ジョージ様との仲を取り持ってもらって、
世界の一なる元素を得ることで人間になることができそれを満たさないならそれは人間じゃないだから人は一なる元素を得るために生涯を尽くし貫いていく姉さんが何を言っているのかわからないねよまよいことなら聞きたくないよならカノン君にもわかるように教えてあげるねほら姉さんの指の先を見て<笑>シェネンポイントストレートアッドシーアッドホライズン。シェネンディンアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシーアッドシー Objectively speaking, the sea laid out beneath a cloudy sky could probably be described best by Kenan's words. But as Shannon closed her eyes and smiled, she shook her head slightly. Alright, hold on, let's go.、Uh... Alright, blue and green, the color of. Ao, Ao in Japanese has a range of meanings including pale, fresh, young, naive, and the colors blue and green in one word. The sea and sky are Ao. <laughs> I am so pronouncing that wrong. Fresh grass is Ao, and so is the green on a traffic light. Nowadays, Japanese have a native word, Midori, for the color green, but the use of the broad word Ao is still common, and this is the color Shannon uses to refer to the sea. Canon wonders if she is using it to mean something other than blue. 違うの海は真っ青私には分かってカノン君には分からないならこれがつまりそういうことなのカノン君は分からないよ私は分からないよ分からないよカノン君手を出してカノン君は分からないよカノン君は分からないよカノン君は分からないよカノン君は分からないよカノン君は分シェネン・ソフリー・セット・ソムティング・デア。It was the magic brooch which he had received from Beatrice. Maybe he'll fall in love with Jessica. Maybe, maybe they'll get into a relationship. The magic charm,、uh, the magic charm shaped like a gold butterfly which could fulfill love. これはあいつの。うん。これは私の。だから私だと思って粗末にしないで。<笑> After being told that, he couldn't just throw it away. Cannon didn't know what he should do, and he stood there confused for a while, the brooch still on the palm of his hand. Shannon put the palm of her hand on top of Cannon's, and the brooch was warmed by both their hands. はずかしければ、ふところにしのばせておくだけでもいいそうなの。バカバカしい。あいつの魔法なんかに、まどわされてたまるか。Even as he said that, Cannon couldn't be cold hearted towards something Shannon was pressing on him. In the end, Cannon agreed reluctantly to take it, saying he'd prove that, it wouldn't surrender, that he wouldn't surrender to the witch's power. Shannon smiled and nodded back. きっと。カノン君は大切なことを学べるよきっと人間になれるからそうすればきっとカノン君にもこの海が美しい青に見えるに違いないネズミ色は何度見たってネズミ色さ違うよカノン君そう見えるのは愛がないからえ Because of the howling wind he hadn't been able to catch the critical part of what she had just said So Shannon said it once more, the single element of the world. She spoke once more of a world full of that element, where the sea was deep blue. Without love, it cannot be seen.
そこにいるのは誰か。It's weird to see Kinzo not in his room. He's actually out and about. カノンです。親方様。It was rare for Kinzo to leave his study. However, that in itself didn't mean his noble research had been suspended. He may have left the study for a change of mood, but the thoughts filling his head were no different from those he had inside the study. So Kanon knew that no matter what the time, speaking to Kinzo when he didn't want to be spoken to would always be a disturbance to his research. それには及ばんしばらく私を放っておくがいい息子たちに聞かれても所在は知らぬと言っておけ私は自らの思考をめぐる旅で忙しいかしこまりましたそれでは失礼いたします During the time that Kanon bowed to him Kinzo had already returned to his own world and had forgotten that Kanon was there And once again, he began rambling to himself. I wonder if he's going to see Shannon talking to Beatrice at some point and, you know, wonder why, like, Shannon can see her, but he can't. Amidst those words, the name of that witch was repeated many times. Oh, Beatrice! Here we go again with Kinzo and his Beatrice. どうすれば蘇るのかどうすれば再び微笑んでくれるのか何が足りぬ研究か資料か触媒かそれとも魔力か運気か信託かああベアトリーチどうすればお前の面影をもう一度見ることができるのだあああああ。But when he saw the expression on the witch's face, that emotion of his vanished. Because Beatrice's expression was one of sorrow, or maybe pity. Right behind Kinzo, as he repeated the witch's name over and over, desiring to be reunited with her more than anything else, was the witch herself. So he says the same he says the thing about how he's seen her face. At one point, obviously, he has a painting of her, so he knows what she looks like. So, was she able to show herself to him just once, and that was the only time, and he just wants to be able to see her again? And yet, Kinzo couldn't notice a thing. Even when Beatrice tried to rest her hand on his shoulder, he didn't notice a thing. Kenan took the brute she had received from Shannon out of his pocket. Could he learn something that would enable him to, to see what he currently could not? <laughs> He looked at Kinzo's back once more. The witch was no longer there. Man, Beatrice, she, like, in the first chapter when, you know, she was around, when you saw her, quote unquote, saw her, she seemed, I don't know, like, oh, this is different. I don't know, she seemed kind of mocking, and, but this one you kind of feel sorry for her. Like, she seems very, just very lonely. The biggest event for the Ishromio fall and,、uh, family in fall was the family conference in October. But for Jessica, there was another one before that the school cultural festival. Ah,、uh, I just, I want to get to the family conference so bad. Like, I don't mind this too, like, getting to see, you know, some background of characters that. We just kind of touched upon, but I am so excited once we actually introduce everybody again and they're all together again. 
Jessica liked school. To her, it was a place where she could let out the stress she'd built up during the rigid lifestyle she was forced to lead at home. For the cultural festival today, she'd formed a group with her friends, and would be performing casual pop rock on a temporary stage. She had kept on preparing and practicing for that, and was really looking forward to today. But there was one thing that had been worrying her. She looked at the clock. There was still a little time, but she was uneasy. That's something I wish that, like, Western um, schools would do, is cultural festivals. Like, whenever I play JRPGs, they almost all like, when it's, like, that kind of, like, modern JRPG, especially, obviously, like, with uh, high school students, I always, always, always love when they do the cultural festival sections, because almost all of them have them, right? So I, I love them. I wish we could have stuff like this. Would he really come? She was about to breathe out a uh, stress-relieving sigh. Her heart jumped as all her friends suddenly started speaking in shrill voices. It's not necessarily the case that all girls are like this. But at Jessica's school, at least, the cultural festival was really a boyfriend exhibition. Jessica didn't have a boyfriend. She had many friends of the opposite sex, but no special one. But Jessica was a little famous around the school, and everyone naturally expected she had a fitting partner. Furthermore, her pride had caused her to act like that was the case. Oh, did she maybe ask Hannon to kind of, like, be her boyfriend so she wouldn't be by herself? And that's who she's waiting for? Through such acting and dodging of questions, she had somehow managed to keep up the bluff until this year. And then maybe Cannon started to come around to the idea of, like, without love. So maybe he's, uh, I could see before he would absolutely not agree to do something like this, but maybe he's more open to it. But for various reasons, she hadn't been able to escape this year's cultural festival. This oh, if Cannon is coming, are we gonna get to see him in, like, casual clothing? That'll be weird to see. <laughs> まだ来てねえみてえだぜ。仕事を忙しいのかな。何け何け。すごいよね。社会人なんでしょ。スーツとかで来る。もちろん眼鏡かけてるよね。キャー。ねえ。でも本当はいないんだよね。今素直に白状
おとなしく彼氏はいませんと白状なされてはいかがでしょうかそれはそれは肩身の狭い思いをなされるでしょうが卒業までの短くも長い間を耐え忍ばれるだけでございますし愛し合う恋人同士にとって独り者のひがみ顔が何にも勝る甘い蜜なのですし<laughs> Shannon! It's, it's nice seeing Shannon have a little bit more personality in this one. You can see, like, rather than her just being so meek and, you know, it's like she actually has a good sense of humor and she's playing around and she's joking around. I like this. <laughs> Jessica wrestled about with Shannon, her eyes teary. But Shannon was unconcerned, laughing with her usual smile. At that comeback of Shannon's, the likes of which didn't happen even once a year, Jessica rolled around on her bed, hugging her cushion, writhing and suffering. Shannon's triumphant smile was unbearably frustrating, but right now she was the only person Jessica could talk with. She could wait until later to suffocate her with a cushion. It's good, it's good. 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 Or thumbnail. I should enjoy, like I tell you about, like, man, I can't wait to have the family together, but I should enjoy these light moments between these characters while I still have them, you know? It really was a reaction to be appreciated. Shannon and Jessica were about the same age, of the same sex, and they were also friends. And they were both right in the middle of puberty. They could never talk enough about things related to love. That's why they were able to be open with each other about these topics. So Jessica had heard in detail about how Shannon and George's love was progressing. And on the other side, Shannon had heard the details of what type Jessica liked and what kind of man she might be interested in. Judging by Jessica's reactions, it would probably be crude to talk about that in detail. But we won't get anywhere with Jessica just rolling around on the bed forever, so to be blunt, Jessica had been thinking about Cannon ever since he had first appeared. There was almost no young men on Rokunjima, so maybe it was natural that Jessica, as a girl in puberty, had become interested in Cannon. But if anyone said that, it would destroy the romance of a maiden's pure heart and of love at first sight. <laughs> yeah, just basically saying, like, he was there, she is, she's, you know, in the middle of puberty, so she just took what she could and crushed on him. <laughs> Shannon had been with Cannon the whole time at the Welfare Institute, so she had known him before they had started working. So Jessica had asked persistently about what kind of person he was, what his hobbies were, what his favorite foods were, what type of girl he liked. Even Shannon could clearly tell Jessica was infatuated with Cannon. I say, it must be desperation. I mean, maybe Cannon has like a softer side that he shows to Jessica, but like, he, he's pretty, he's a pretty cold person, doesn't show his emotions. There's not really much there to get attached to unless you're desperate. <laughs> But then again, there's also people who are into, you know, like the silent type, the mysterious type, and he definitely is that. Alright, let's check out that. I mean, I can kind of get a feeling for what it is based on the, uh, you know, what the word is, but... Sundora is the word tundra, coveted, uh, converted to the Japanese sound system. It is used as a pun in reference to the term sundere, which is a well-known character personality trait in fictional Japanese works. Sundere is composed of two words, a sun sun and dere dere, meaning respectively aloof or cranky and love-struck. It is used to describe characters that demonstrate an aggressive and or cold behavior, but then become lovey-dovey under some circumstances. <laughs> so he has, he's able to, yeah, I was gonna say, he's able to look into the future. <laughs> 
ってことは私ってタイプは時代がずれてるってことじゃねえかよアルティメットリジェスカは、ファイナルアグリーンとのプランを、カネンプレテンドビーヘーボーイフレンド。I want to see what he's going to show up in. I'll be so disappointed if he's just wearing the same clothing to the festival. お呼びでしょうかジェスカ realized she had called him at a bad time and immediately regretted it. カネン always had a sour look, but even so, he had some good days and some bad days. Unfortunately, this reaction was the latter. いやそのさえっと<笑> All that confidence and effort she had amassed by practicing in front of the mirror all night was wiped out in about five seconds Jessica turned bright red and hung her head Watching her, Ken inside Jessica thought he was getting fed up with her and her face went pale シャノンから聞いていますお嬢様の学校の文化祭へお供するようにというお話ですかシャノンから当日は特にお嬢様にお仕えするよう、wow. 厳命されております。That's a nice way of putting it. Like literally, he sees it as work. I will, yeah. 僕は高校には行ったことがないのでわかりませんが、何でも男性の付き人がいないと大変肩身が狭い場だとか、後ろ見は本家令状が庶民に劣ることがあってはならないと、特に厳命されておりますので。<laughs> Jessica kept yelling with a strange voice, a broken smile, and steam pouring from her head as if she were a boiler. As Kenan watched this, he sighed again. Kenan wasn't an idiot either. He fully understood what Jessica intended by inviting him. However, in truth, he found it nothing but bothersome to go along with the lady's game of love. But Shannon had s p o k e to him persistently about it. He was very indebted to her for many things. He couldn't refuse. And in his pocket was that brooch. Brooch. Could the strange turn of events also have been brought about by the magic power residing in this brooch? Ridiculous. But those words of Shannon's came to mind. What did Shannon see that I cannot? I don't understand Shannon's feelings. We are furniture. As if we could become something more than that. Jessica still rambling on in a strange voice, and Cannon sighing deeply were a truly odd combination. <laughs> I better see this. They better not glaze over it. I want to see him at the festival. Come on. Yes, that's right. Yay! As my friends all gathered together, they were looking this way with a hard to describe expression. Whispering to each other in low voices that couldn't be called low. Even I felt kind of shameless. Did I just say sorry? Who? Like I didn't know who showed up. Oh crap, crap, crap. My mind is blank. Well,、oh. oh, look at him. He looks. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that jacket. He looks like he's trying a little hard to be like, I'm so dark and mysterious. Maybe Jessica told him to, like, I want you to dress up and just, like, play into that because that's pretty much how he is. シャノン、あとで2階級特進 
<笑>なんだかここは女の人ばかりで居心地が悪いですでだよなだよなささここじゃなくてステージの方に行こうぜもうすぐ私たちの出番だからさ It seemed that Jessica was just as uncomfortable. It looked like she was finding it difficult to cope while bathed in everyone's interested gaze. When he saw Jessica's appearance, Cannon thought he might have made things difficult for her by coming. Okay, I think that's another. I don't know what that means. <laughs> He's like, can you please stop screeching? <laughs> oh my god. He's like, oh my god, he called her my lady. They're gonna be like dying over that. そうですかわかりましたジェシカ様あシスケズミのサバ漬けだごごごごめんカノン君三秒でいいから目つぶっててくれるかないやーキキスのキスキキスするわよで、では<笑>つまりますバン、ソンク、バンバン、スラム、クラッシュ。When Cannon opened his eyes, for some reason, there was a horrible tragedy in the room. Everyone had been driven into the walls, their arms and legs outstretched. Jessica put her brass knuckles in her pocket before Cannon opened his eyes. Damn, wasn't expecting that. とにかくステージの方に行こう。私たちの出番はもうすぐだから、しばらく席で待っててよ。私たちは準備あるからさ。この先、突き当たりまで行けば仮設部隊があるからわかるぜそこで待っててキャノン seemed to be having a hard time adjusting pushing him in the back Jessica sent him out into the corridor even though Cannon was confused by Jessica's attitude and show of agitation which he had never seen before he followed her instruction and headed in the direction she had indicated after seeing him off with an awkward smile Jessica slammed the door shut and he yelled out loudly Sasa! Me だね見たでしょ満足した<笑>ざまあねぜ<笑>かけに負けた絶対女子に彼氏なんかいないと思ってたのに彼氏じゃないんでしょ使用人へのパワハラでしょ<笑><笑>ジェシの彼氏素敵だおいやいや <laughs> Jessica took the brass knuckles out of her pocket again, and everyone energetically returned to their tasks. <sighs> Cannon went down to the corridor as Jessica had told him to, and found a temporary stage set up where the vending machine should have been. It was probably being shared in time slots between the individual groups and clubs. A student group was singing, and the place was already fired up. Disliking that ruckus, he found a dark wall to lean against alone. So, this is why they call it high school. It sure is noisy, Kenan thought. Then he remembered Jessica just now, acting in a way he'd never seen before. Honestly, she was in such high spirits that alcohol might have been involved. That's just called the power of love. To him, the greatest virtue for a person was to always be composed and intellectual. In that sense, it was very hard for him to get used to the atmosphere in a school cultural festival. He had the responsibility of reporting everything he saw or heard to the master, so he would also have to report about Jessica's unrestrained behavior earlier. At the very least, it was not fitting for a daughter of the Ushromio main family. You little snitch! The master, Krausama, and especially Natsui Sama, would probably be angry. If I were to report it in a way that protects my lady, should I blame it on inappropriate school friends? <laughs> Cannon thought back on how Jessica had acted earlier and sighed again. He could understand Natsui's headache a little now. 
Come to think of it, Natsui Sama, as the president of the PTA, should have gone straight to a social after attending the ceremony in the gymnasium. Hadn't she said she wouldn't be there to see Milady's event? That was probably for the best. <laughs> Several female students kept glancing at me. It seemed they were all whispering the same sort of things that Milady's school friends had said. It was really unpleasant. Come to think of it, didn't Shannon warn me? That if I was going to walk around a school festival on my own, I'd better watch out because a lot of strange people would come and talk to me. Uh, uh, no. Just as I expected, a group of girls I'd never met started talking to me. Their stares seemed, uh, started to make my back tingle. Didn't she tell some magical words that could chase them off in times like this? Um... Oh, I've worked. Instant reaction. Well, that got them to go away, but it hasn't really changed the number of people staring at me. No way I'm ever coming to a place like this again. Ken inside for about the hundredth time that day. As he did, the lighting changed and the standing audience started cheering. Looking around, I realized there were suddenly a large number of people here. And unlike earlier, they were all guys. With this huge crowd, I couldn't even see the stage. Fortunately, there was a fallen beer case nearby, so I tried using that as a footstool. And I noticed that there was now a new group on stage. Oh my goodness, that's a look. That, that's a look. You trying to be a Spice Girl? <laughs> the leader was Milady. She had changed into stage clothes and was even holding a guitar. I didn't know she could play. No, maybe she could. I have seen her practicing air guitar before. Natsui-sama wouldn't approve of any hobbies outside of study. Maybe she was always practicing in secret. Come to think of it, she's been returning really late from school recently, hasn't she? Maybe she's been practicing at school, far away from Natsui-sama's prying eyes. It really is for the best that Natsui-sama didn't come. If Milady were to get scolded by Natsui-sama after putting so many hours of practice in, she would probably be very dejected. I could hear Jessica-sama's forceful voice through the speakers. Jessie-sama? Maybe that's her nickname at school. Students in the audience kept calling out that name. I was a little aggravated by that inferior name, which was inappropriate for Milady. Jessica-sama uh, Jessica was in great spirits as they kept calling her Jessie-sama. They were all probably her fans. With her mic performance, she was responding to that and firing the place up. It was almost like a song program on TV. At first, I thought all this was frivolous, but that feeling now changed into appreciation. This was pretty incredible in its own way. Aw, oh, he's gonna have fun despite himself. Cannon had never listened to music of his own free will, but he had often heard the kind of music that the people of the Ushiromiya family liked. Since I was almost all classical music, Cannon had naturally started liking classical music too. So to Cannon, the songs Jessica and the others were singing were, how should you say it? Very modern. In any case, he thought that if Natsui-sama heard it, she would probably faint. I was not expecting this, okay. But everyone looked like they were having a really good time. The die-hard fans who had even brought pen lights sang along, dancing crazily with the exact same movements, almost as though it had been planned ahead. On the stage, Jessica Sama also sang enthusiastically, dripping with sweat. He couldn't find a single element that was appropriate for a daughter of the Ushiromiya family, but it looked like she was having a lot of fun. I couldn't keep up with the atmosphere, but anyway, my lady was full of life and looked like she was having a great time. As I looked at my lady was having a great time, I thought, isn't this what Ushiromiya Jessica is really like? Don't I know better than anyone just how badly life on Rokunjima kills your own sense of self? Then the time she spends, not as Milady, the successor of the Ushiromiya family, 
But as a single girl called Jessica, living life to the fullest must be very important to her. I worked close to Milady, saw her in all seasons, and I thought I knew everything about her. But that was only a single limited side of her, Milady of Rokunjima. Oh, maybe starting to, he's starting to catch some feels, whether it's the brooch or it's himself, I don't know. We are furniture. We serve on Rokunjima and end our lives on Rokunjima. So I had come to think that Rokunjima itself was our whole world, as though, just like in the old geocentric theories, the ocean spilled off the end of the world into an abyss. But as I looked at Milady like this, I realized that this was a horribly narrow outlook. I still couldn't keep up with the excitement of the crowd, but I felt like I had seen something that cannot be seen on Rokunjima. Although I don't know if it was the unseeable thing Shannon was talking about, I still can't see the ocean as blue. Well, Jessica certainly looking very blue in that outfit. <laughs> 今日はジェシカの学校の文化祭だったな。校長先生はお元気でおられたかね。ええ、お元気なようでした。そうそう。高宮議員もおいでになっておりました。あなたによろしくと特に言っておりましたよ。うん。相変わらずご多忙そうかね。そのようでした。あの方も精力的な方です。そうそう。あと、江ノ間会長
So maybe you could say that for Jessica. Choosing not to return to her own room and instead disappearing to an unknown location in this large mansion was a meager form of resistance. Jessica felt that even being in the mansion made it hard to breathe, so she went outside to the Rose Garden. She's going to have an encounter with Cannon, isn't she? <sighs> Jessica laughed at what she was sulking over laughed at what kind of words she would have had to receive to be satisfied. Ridiculous. In the end, I'm just a spoiled little kid. I can't believe myself. It's almost funny. Ojo-sama. Yay! All oh, <gasps> cute! <gasps> Me cute! <laughs> Kenan had suddenly started talking to her just as she had tried to force a laugh, so she choked. What? <laughs> Jessica's expression had become the one Cannon always saw. The listless Jessica from a second ago was gone. If he still only knew Jessica as the successor to the Ushiromiya family as he did until today, he would have mistakenly thought that Jessica's mood had sprung back to normal. But that was wrong. He now knew a part of her that he could not see until today, so he understood that there was no way that, on the inside, Jessica was just as she appeared. あ。今日は文化祭、いや、私の見えに付き合ってくれてありがとうな。助かったぜ。オータ、お上手でした。うわ。あ、そうかよ。照れるぜ。Even though she had heard the words she had most wanted to hear, Jessica became shy and couldn't accept them frankly. 僕には歌は歌えません。楽器も。小学校で習ったハーモニカとリコーダーブしか知りませんだからお嬢様も同じだろうと決めつけていましたケネン hasn't been consciously looking down on Jessica that Kenan hadn't been consciously looking down on Jessica to that degree but people playing unique instruments were always on the other side of the bronze tubes in the TV he got it into his head that it would be impossible for Jessica at least 僕は家具だから歌を歌う必要も楽器を扱う必要もないと信じてきました。But I'm not sure anymore. その家具だからって口癖、本当に予想ぜ。使用人の心得ってやつだろ。使用人は生きた家具であれってやつ。源氏さんがよく口にしてるもんな。心得というわけでは。本当に家具ですし。福音の家の子たちがいろいろ爺様から援助をもらってるってのは知ってる。それに恩義を感じてるのも知ってるよ。でもだからって家具なんて言い方はあんまりだぜ。私たちは同じ人間じゃないかよ
こんな運命じゃ納得できないから自分の思い切りを頑張ろうと思っただから後宮家のお嬢様をやらなければならない窮屈な自分と自分の好きなことに精一杯な自分というもう一人を作ったもう一人の自分カノン君は自分のことを家具だからと言い聞かせてきたそう言い聞かせなきゃならない辛いことがきっとたくさんあったんだと思うそれについては本当に気の毒だと思うでもそれだけでカノン君の人生を全て決めちゃうなんて私はそんなの悲しいと思うんだよ<笑>人はさ自分の中に自分が本当に好きになれるもう一人の自分をいつでも作り出すことができるんだよ現実逃避とかとは違うぜそのもう一人の自分でいるとき私は最高に生きているって実感できるだから普段の日常がどんなに窮屈で退屈でも私はきっと窒息せずに生きていけるってわけ自分の中に自分が本当に好きになれる自分を作る To make another me, which isn't furniture. Through her relationship with George Sama, has Shannon g i v e birth to a part of herself that isn't furniture? And did this other Shannon see something that cannot be seen by furniture? Hmm, I saw. Kanon kun no private te, zen zen shira nai ze. Demo, nanda ka so so dekiru. Kanon kun no private ni wa, tabun nani mo nai. Tsubosh de sho? Cannon couldn't reply, but that was answer enough. He had no concept of a private life, so Cannon would always be Cannon. So furniture would always be furniture. Cannon-kun no Cannon te sa. Where are we, we going to learn his real name? Because we know Shannon's is Sayo. The Gospel House gave new students new families and a new life, so it also made a point of giving each of them a new name. In his case, that was Cannon. Tashkani. Boku no kono nawa. He had thought that he wasn't anyone other than Canon, but he remembered. There definitely had been a part of himself that wasn't Canon, but that was far, far away, beyond the distant fog of oblivion. Nara, Canon kun ni mo, Canon kun de aru toki to, so de nai toki de chigau jibun ga ite mo ii hazu. Shio nin de aru toki no Canon kun wa, mizukara o kagu to yobi, kibishiku jiku o imashime teru kamo shire nai. でもカノン君じゃない時の君はもっともっと自由に生きていいと思うんだ Those words definitely weren't just lip service Jessica had always been like this in the past She had cursed her own birth into an environment different from all of her friends at school She had been the only one in a heavily constructed environment forced to learn various things and she had even received words about the friends she played with Though she had been sad about that, she had given up thinking that she had just been born under that kind of star. But one day, Jessica had stopped giving up and surrendering. Stuff like the Ushiromiya family customs and pressures, those didn't matter. She created a real Jessica inside herself who could do what she really wanted to do. ジェシカである時も頑張れるんだカノン君にもカノンである時とカノンじゃなくてその本名である時で違う生き方をしてもいいんじゃないかなカノンじゃない時自分を好きになれる自分になってみてもいいんじゃないかな僕はカノンじゃない時He had thought that his real name didn't matter at all So he had thought Cannon was all he was, and now Jessica was saying he should create a new existence, another self that wasn't Cannon. Cannon, you're not going to be a good person. You're not going to be a good person. What's your name? He was silent for quite some time. Maybe his real name had risen to the tip of his tongue. After hesitating for a long time over whether he should say it, in the end, he swallowed it back down. Aww. Those words signified a slight rejection. Those 
過去など何の関係もない作られた家具の材料が元は何という木の幹であったかなんてどうでもいいことと同じですだからよせって家具じゃないんだぞ君は人間だぜ僕は人間じゃない Kenan clearly spoke his refusal. It was with a rage that he normally didn't show. Jessica couldn't say anything back and was struck silent. お嬢様は人間です。だからどんな生き方をしようとも自由で、どんな未来も、可能性もある。それはまるで、翼を持ち、自在に空を舞う鳥のよう。でも、僕にはそんなものはないんです。僕がたとえ鳥に見えたとしても、アヒルに過ぎないアヒルに翼はあっても飛ぶことはできないなのに空の夢を語るなんてそんなのは残酷すぎるカグダのアヒルだの何だってんだよ一体いやジェスカは unconsciously gone along with Cannon's forceful manner of speaking but she realized that she shouldn't fire back and swallowed her words 私は君のことを何も知らない生い立ちも知らないしその苦労も知らないだから君がどうして自分を家具だなんて言い出すようになったのかそっでも知って君は家具でもアヒルでもないちゃんとした人間だぜ<笑>使用人としてのカノン君が家具だと言うならそれでもいいよでもならカノン君は家具でない時の人間の時の自分を作ってもいいとは思わないそんな可能性を抱けるのは僕はそうじゃない僕には未来も可能性も見るべき夢もないだからお嬢様それ以上残酷なことを言わないでくださいなんでだよなんでそんなことを言うんだよお嬢様が僕のことをご自分と同じ人間だと勘違いなされているようだからです僕とお嬢様は違う存在それをはっきり申し上げておきたかったのですシャノンに聞きましたお嬢様は僕のことをお気に入りになられているとかあっあいや僕は人間に限りなく近い姿をしていますだからシャノンのように自分を人間だと錯覚して一時恋愛の真似事をすることもできるかもしれないでもそれは自分を騙しているに違いないいえお嬢様を騙すことにもなるのですシャノンとジョージ様も必ず破綻するその日が訪れることをシャノンだって理解しているだろうにバカなことババカだってことはないだろそりゃジョージ兄さんは立派な人だし両親の期待も背負ってる確かに結婚とかになればエヴァおばさんがいろいろと口出しをしてくるだろうしまあその善とは他難だと思うぜ I think a tough road ahead of them is、uh... <laughs> yeah probably not in a way she's expecting though でもなジョージ兄さんはそんなのに屈する人じゃねえシャノンをジュリエットになんかしねえぜきっと幸せにしてくれる It's funny that she said the thing about Julia because this feels I don't know like this relationship of theirs it feels very Shakespearean to me in a way it's just like they're from two different factions that they can't be together but it well I mean at least Jessica wants to be together Cannon is fighting it pretty hard 人は家具と恋などできないお嬢様が家具を愛することができても僕にお嬢様を愛することができないとそう申し上げたいのです。Damn, shut down. <笑> Those words of cannons crushed all of Jessica's bittersweet feelings from today. There was no way she could have anticipated the emotions of such a blunt rejection. In an instant, she lost the willpower that had caused her to try and unravel something stubborn in cannons' heart. Before she knew it, she was just standing there in shock. お嬢様が僕を好かれているという気持ちが。僕の思い上がりによるものならどうかお許しくださいい,いやまあその
そこは否定しねえぜありがとうございますえ僕を人間だと思ってくれてありがとうございますそのお気持ちだけで僕そしてそれ以上は僕には残酷すぎるから、oh, so, so I didn't expect this to be so sad. I thought there was gonna. It looked like they were coming towards a moment where maybe she'd make him realize something in himself, but he's rejecting it so hard. <laughs> Jessica scratched her head as she spoke and tried to force her voice to sound bright. Oh. <laughs> きっと<笑> お嬢様。うん。おやすみ。ああ。ジェスカ turned her back to him and slowly trotted back, looking disheartened. But suddenly she started dashing pell mell and disappeared in the direction of the mansion. As he watched her go, for just an instant, Cannon was tormented by the feeling that he just made a huge mistake. But no, he thought, this had not been a mistake at all. It was for her sake that he'd been forced to refuse her now, while her pain was still at its smallest. When he turned around, the witch was suddenly there. It looked like she had been there the whole time, enjoying their performance as if it were a play. This whole game kind of feels like it's a play in itself. Maybe it's just the dramatic music and everything, but I don't know. It just it feels almost like a play. 男と女のこじれ合いに勝る見せ物は千年を経ても存在せぬなわらわにとっては何よりも甘美な止められぬ快楽よケネン pulled that butterfly brooch out of his pocket it was the crystallization of the great magic that the witch had bestowed oh he threw it did he throw it? Oh, without hesitation, Cannon flung it hard onto the ground and stomped on it. <sighs> Until、uh, Battler came around, I'm sure Cannon was the most interesting person to her because he's so defiant of her. むすばれぬ者たちに恋を見せてたぶらかしてたのしんでいるだけの悪魔だそう思うも自由よわらわが力を貸した人間の多くはお前と同じようなことを口にする放けるなお前はシャノン憐れんで力を貸したんじゃない
そなたはそれにハサミを入れ刈り取ったつもりでいるだが木は勝手に茂らせたものより枝を間引き剪定したものの方が太い枝をつけるというぞシャーノンとジョージもやがては結ばれ得ぬ恋に行き詰まりわらわ好みの大きな果実を実らせるだろう Ooh, interesting. We'll reach a stalemate with their love, their unfulfillable love. So she's like, she wants that. It's like she said, she loves seeing the、uh, drama almost between couples. So it's like she knew she was setting them up to fail. しかし、いかんせんあの二人はうまくいきすぎていて、面白くなくてな。Is Beatrice going to kind of, what is the word? Is she going to interfere and cause discourse in their relationship? そこへ行くと、お前たちは大いにわらわを楽しませてくれそうだぞ。<laughs> the witch laughed. Even though she had known the two could not be joined, she had lent magic to join them together. However, they couldn't escape the fate that made it impossible for them to be joined. The witch knew that. Even if they were joined, the relationships of Shannon and George, Cannon and Jessica, would fail for certain. And as they wandered through the eternal desert,、uh, desert In the hell of love, they would be tormented by eternal thirst. She'd be the type, if she were a person in modern day, she would be the type who would be、uh, following people on social media, like really toxic people, and just getting a lot of joy out of just watching their lives, just like,、uh, like a spectator. やがて必ず訪れる二人への過酷な運命の干渉料、like, としていただくわけよ。So I knew she wasn't doing it out of the goodness of her heart, but I wasn't expecting that to be like her compensation. It's just like I'm gonna watch them fail and enjoy it. これに勝る見せ物は千年経っても存在せぬ。金蔵を見るがいい。恋の味を知り、楽園を追放された哀れな追いぼれの末路。She had me fooled for like she had that moment with Shannon where they seemed to be getting on well, and I don't know if that was fake or not, where she seemed to just enjoy having someone to talk to, and she seemed almost human for a little while. But this is the Beatrice that I feel like this is this is what I imagined her as. <laughs> and they praise her for it, you know, they think that's like, oh, Beatrice, you've. You know, I'm indebted to you for helping me out. And, and then they don't even realize what her true me-、uh, not her methods, her、uh, motivations were. そなたら恋人たちに力を授けるのに無理をしすぎたのでな触媒のブローチなしで力を維持し続けるのは今のわらわには容易ではないケネン・グラウンド・ヒス・フォット・イヴン・モーン・トゥ・ストンプ・ブローチ・ヒフェルト・イッ・ブレイク・アンド・ヒス・フォット・デン・イッ・ディゾルブ・アズ・イフ・イント・ウォーター・アン・チェンジ・イント・バタフライズ・ザ・スパーク・ル・ゴールド・ウィッシュ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルト・アウェイ・フォルこの姿を保ち続けるのがちと苦しいしばしそなたの願い通り姿を消そう満ちぬ潮も月もないように我が魔力も必ず満ちるそして必ずや訪れようわらわがよみがえるにふさわしい時が。Which is going to be at the family meeting, which I hope is going to be happening soon. I, mean, I, I want to see all the characters again. I miss them. ししばし姿を消すそなたの手のひらにもはやあざはなくそなたが望むならば明日の朝にはわらわの存在など夢か幻のように消し去ることもできよう忘れ去られることほどわらわに悲しいことはない
だがわらわは必ずよみがえるそしてその日がいつ訪れても後悔することのないよう自らを戒めよわらわは必ずや再臨しこの島の真の主として全てを支配するその時こそ再び黄金橋の扉が開かれる欲深な亡者たちが必ずやわらわを呼び覚ますくどい早く消え去れ黄金の魔女Leaving behind a mocking laugh, the witch turned into a flight of gold butterflies and scattered away. The whole area sparkled like a gold blizzard in the snow globe. It was a fleeting fantastical scene that disappeared in a heartbeat. The witch could no longer be seen. However, Cannon felt like he could still hear that shrill, unpleasant laugh. ゆかいゆかいなぜに久しぶりの人の世はこうも愉快なのか恋に惑え黄金に惑えそのどちらにも惑わぬものなど人間にあらずなるほどゆえに家具とは言い得たり<笑>家具は人間に奉仕するために生み出されるそしてわらわは退屈なる千年の慰み者として人間を虐げるそのわらわが家具を支配できぬとは何とも愉快な三すくみ金蔵め実に面白いことをしてくれる家具めわらわを打てるか試みてみるがいい今宵まきたる恋の種は二つすでにまきたる種と含めてこれで三つ「ベアトリーチェなぜに私を一人この苦害に置き去りにしたのか」。私は憎いこれほどまでに恋い焦がれているのに答えようとせぬお前を永遠に憎む親方様、hey, there's Genji. それ以上のお酒はお体に触りたい南條先生からもごちゅ黙れ源氏 Oh, is this? Is this the opening of what happened in the first chapter? They had a very similar conversation, but Nanjo wasn't there, was he? He was, at, he was there at the beginning of the first chapter, but not. Here. Of course, this is going to be a different、uh, loop or arc or whatever you want to call this because it's not, I doubt it's going to go exactly the same way. It's got to be different. お前だけは我が苦しみを理解してくれているとお前だけは我が最古の友人であると信じているのになぜに理解できないというのかおーベアトリーチェなぜ私だけを置き去りに No, Jessica. Oh, oh, it was here, Jessica. Some. 寝室から聞こえてくるすすり泣く声に私は事情を知りつつもどうしようもないのでございます。There's something about Kumasawa. I was like just lurking in the shadows and knowing everything that's going on. Maybe there's something to her. Maybe she's, there's, maybe she's something to do with this. I don't know. すべては若すぎた2人と近すぎた距離。そして。生まれた家柄が遠すぎたゆえの悲劇私はただただ
お嬢様のお気持ちを汲み取り足音を殺して静かに立ち去るのみなのでございます。All right, so we'll do it for episode 12 of my Umineko Let's Play. So,、um, I had a feeling, like I said, Vance Riche, there was more to it than her just wanting to help Shannon for being, you know,、uh, subservient to her. And now we know her true motivations are just to see people in love eventually fall out of love and、uh, destroy themselves, which is kind of fucked up. <laughs> and then there was Cannon outright rejecting. It's Riche, which is interesting because, like we saw in the first chapter, Canon did seem to have some sort of、uh, reverence for her, whether it was out of fear or respect.、Uh, I'm not too sure.、Uh, and then, yeah, that was just really tragic with Jessica and Canon. It was a really cute moment they had, and then it wasn't, and that's very sad. So, I'm just curious like, when is the meeting going to happen? Don't get me wrong, I'm all for like, the backstory and going in, delving into、uh, these characters, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm, I'm so excited and interested to see like, how it's going to go this time,、uh, what changes are going to be made, who's going to die, and what order and how. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and stay tuned next week for episode 13. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons Nana, Sparky, Icognito, Mad Goldsmith, Derek Nickel, Harry Gaziff, and Asborn Kennedy.